Hey folks, it's time for Twip Pro Photo Critique number 53. This is Twip. Hey, welcome back to another Twip Pro Photo Critique. This is episode number 52. We've done 52 of these episodes. Troy Miller, my partner in crime, is here to, uh, to step through the... 31 images that we have submit today. You believe that, Troy? 31 images, man. No, it seems like it seems like the number of images is slowly chasing the number of episodes. So <laughs> <laughs> So we're gonna we're gonna be up to fifty-two uh by when. Have you done the math to, to kind of yeah, when the convergence I, I, happens? <laughs> I'm afraid. I think it's going to happen around 64. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Well, well, you know, for the Twip Pro members that are watching this and the ones that have submitted your images, thank you. All 30. No, it's not 31 because some people submitted multiple. Um, but uh, I'm going to send out a note to the community to kind of with some guidelines now because we're no longer Wild West. We're actually kind of a city that needs a little bit of infrastructure <laughs> so, we do yeah we yeah no the, the outhouse is just ain't working anymore man <laughs> we need some plumbing <laughs> yeah we don't want a fire festival you know, you know no fire festival no fire festival going on here no tents with waterlogged beds none of that stuff well cool man um i think we should just dive right in what do you say i say we should yeah we definitely have a lot we're gonna have to we're gonna have to push through these we're gonna, we gonna be quite succinctly expeditious all right here we go let's bring this up we are now in the twip pro community folks if you are not a member of twip pro you can become one at twippro.com and uh join us in our photo critique sessions as well as lots of other stuff we have going on in there um let's dive right in this first one is from trey nelson what's up trey uh let's see i got palettes covering up trays text here let me move this over all right now i can see what i'm doing okay uh trey says humanitarian trip to west africa regions this was shot at an orphanage that a group of us paid to have wa have a water well installed six months of tuition and school supplies for the about 70 ish kids living there we also paid for three months of food for the kids and staff. Very humbling experience to see how blessed we are to have certain luxuries and resources. The little girl in the middle was the only one that really noticed I took the picture. At first, she looked up from eating her bowl of oxtails, vegetables, and saffron rice, which was very tasty, by the way. The kids around her were running around and playing and sort of created a natural framing for her through all the commotion that the kids can cause while playing. He shot this with his Leica M9-P with the Zeiss ZM50 f2.0 planar lens. Let's take a look at this shot. Wow, look at that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I was looking at that. I just I love the the sort of quietness in her face, mm -hmm. you know, as she as she's making connection with the camera. There's so much story going on here mm -hmm. from, you know, her holding that plate of uh, of of her meal, the tear. It looks like in, in what would be her top, you know, the top left corner over her shoulder, yeah. the kids, the the grunge. I mean, it's just it's such an amazing storytelling moment. So I think it's I think it's really fantastic. I. I would only add that if that if we could just bring up the center a little bit brighter, only a little bit, mm -hmm. not a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just it feels very a subtly. Yeah, just maybe even just the highlights on her face. Not a, not a lot, but just to kind of draw us into into her even more, or maybe just leave her where she's at and take the outside down even slightly. I know there's looks like there's some vignette on it anyway, um, some dodging and burning, but yeah, yeah, it's it's a fantastic story. Yeah, I agree with what you're saying, and what the details that got me are. Um, Obviously, the story is, is fantastic, and and Trey, thank you for 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 doing that. It's always mm -hmm. great to to talk to photographers that are using their powers for good, right? Right. Um, and but looking at this photo, the one of the things that got me was just the colors and the patterns that are going on. They're so distinctively Africa. You know, you look in there, and it's just right. yellows and bright greens and oranges and you know of course obviously the people but it just you know you don't even need the story to know where this was taken a hundred percent uh right and I, right. I i know i know i know somebody's thinking it that troy's thinking black and white but he's not this no is, no this i have to push to back color. <laughs> yeah this, yeah no no yeah this definitely is one of those times where the colors are definitely adding 
to the image without those colors it's just it's all gonna go away yeah yeah. so yeah the colors definitely stick it you know it gives it a a locale right and then yeah he did a good job try i'd like to see some more from the series if you got some you know post those in uh in twit pro in the maybe maybe in the comments for uh for this post and oh yeah that'd be great yeah Yeah. see see the the rest of the story Yeah. yeah the rest of the story all right very cool all right moving along and folks that are watching we're going to go a little bit quicker on this one for obvious reasons because you know at some point troy's gonna have to go to bed (laughs) (laughs) all right this next one is from wait for it wait for it it's from warren lose uh warren calls this one purple rain he shot it with his canon 5d mark three um uh, what 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 is f six one four? I'm not sure. What that is. Um, one three twentieth of a second ISO one thousand. Let's take a look at this shot. Look at that purple rain. Now I get it. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah that's yeah. cool. That's... I like the I like the presentation. I like the key line in the frame. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just you know the thing the thing for me on an image like this is is direction of light, quality of light, mm-hmm. you know, regardless of whether it's a flower or a stem or a tree or a mountain or a person, it's, it's all about the quality of light. And this just feels flat. Yeah. So, I mean, I love the concept and the abstractness of it and maybe some tweaking and tuning in post would, would bring out some of those highlights. So you think, you think it needs more definition in terms of the contrast? So the difference between light and shadow? Yeah. And then and then maybe a brighter background or something, because it just feels like a lot of the tones that are in here are muted in a way that it's really not showing off the 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 flower as well Mm -hmm. as it could be. Right. I mean, I love the square composition, the dead center, the stem right at the center at the bottom. I mean, all that's there. It's just it's hard to know where to look because everything kind of draws your eye the same. You know what? I'm I'm a little disappointed in you, Troy Miller, because I thought that you were. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think you're losing your anal retentiveness a little bit because. <laughs> because <laughs> Wait, what? Because the stem? <laughs> no, because it's not exactly centered, and it should. It feels like it should be, but it's not exactly centered, right? No, no, it's not. I think, and that's because the flower head is not perfectly round, oh. so it feels like the frame is square. But the flower head is horizontal. So it's balanced left and right and it's balanced top and bottom, which is intentional. So technically it is centered. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. <Troy. laughs> that was a lot of words. Yeah, going to politics. <laughs> a lot of- <laughs> it was a lot of words. But like it's still not centered, Troy. Oh, <laughs> jeez. Uh, All right, let's move along. Thank you, Warren Luz, for your uh, for this photo. It is a beautiful photo. I have a feeling that that's part of a series as well, right? It's got to be yeah. part of a series. All right, next one up. Uh, another one from Warren. We got a couple more from Roy- Warren in here. He said he calls this one "Hope." It was taken at Alcatraz, uh, which is a um, tourist attraction here in the San Francisco Bay Area, old prison. Um, he shot it with his Canon 5D Mark III, F6.3, 150th of a second, ISO 800. Bring this up. Oh, look at that. See? Graphic. Yeah. Graphic. Yeah, we got a nice graphic elements. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I think, you know, for um, w- right away, I looked at the title. And so being an image comp judge, the title really, really makes me want to think about what the photographer is trying to say. Mm -hmm. And I, and I just don't, I don't know that I see the inside of these bars as hope, Mm. you know, it kind of confused me. I'm trying to figure out like, is is this the inside of the, of the prison, the outside? Uh, you know, is there an open window, an open door? Like the title really confused me. So taking away the title, um, it's incredibly amazing graphic repeating patterns. Uh, I love all that. It's just the title doesn't make sense. Well, I mean, if the if the title is hope and and you look at a shot like this that is of a prison, the only hope that I would assume that well, one of the few things that that relate to hope that prisoners get is looking outside, right? So these are windows to the outside and the rest of your, the rest of your days or the rest of your day, you're <laughs> inside behind bars looking at painted cinder block, you know, and you finally get to look out that would give you a little hope, but I don't know. 
right stretch. right no i get it i get it i'm just that's that's my uh that's my image competition judge hat yeah yep you know i'm, I'm trying to i'm trying to look at the at the title but aside from that i love the presentation the balance the the lines even though they're, they're leaning a little bit to the left of the windows i like that skew in the image i think that's i think that's really nice yeah adds a little bit of tension you really think, well done you think this one will look good printed Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything, anything black and white like this would look good printed. Yeah, no, I agree. Cool. All right. And I think we have one more <clears throat> from Warren. Warren says overhead enclosure. Uh, while I use a Canon 5D Mark III, this was taken using an iPhone 8. Yeah. No longer does it really matter, right? I mean, yeah, no. it matters for some things, but it used to be. Remember back in the day, it used to be. Cell phone photos were just automatically crappy, no matter what, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. I used anymore. to say, you know what I used to say? Uh, and this wasn't that long ago. I used to say the cell phones, the cameras in cell phones are an unfortunate sort of placebo because they trick you into thinking you're capturing these precious moments when in reality you're capturing garbage and you miss the moment because you don't have a phone. right because you use your phone right, right. use your phone but now that's that's all changed in evidence by this shot look at this it's, i mean yeah. he's he, i can see he's moving into the direction of sort of geometric shapes and patterns and that sort of thing and i love that these kind of shots make you think they make you think about right and this is yeah, this is definitely my favorite of the three that uh, that you've submitted, Warren. I love I love the simplicity, the balance, the presentation. Mm -hmm. um, you know the the way that you framed it and everything, the color tone. It's it's very 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 abstract, yeah. and I and I dig that. I can see this as a as a fine art piece. Yeah. No, absolutely, absolutely. And you're not mm -hmm. going to say anything about taking out that little light thing at the bottom right. I'm not going to say that. No. <laughs> I'm only waiting. It's like a video game for me. I'm like, okay, let's see what Troy's going to say about this image. <laughs> no, I like this one too. I, I agree. This one can definitely, you know, it, it definitely passes the what I hang it on the wall test for sure, right? Right, right. All right, Warren, thank you. And welcome to Twip Pro, man. It's good to see your stuff in here. Armando Brook is up. And Armando says... This photo was took in India, and I used Lightroom and the 3D filter in Photoshop to increase the tin, the skin texture. Interesting. I never heard anyone doing that. He shot it with 35 millimeter f/8 at 1 250th of a second, ISO 250, and the original was in portrait, but he cropped it to 16 by 9 for more impact. All right. Wow. Have you ever yeah. heard of anyone using doing that? Using the 3D filter in? I don't, I've never, I don't even think I've ever used that filter. Uh. Uh. But this yeah. one definitely pops off the page, though, doesn't it? Jeez. Yeah, yeah. The no, the the tones are well handled. I love the crop. I think the crop works really well. This yep. is this is an appropriate, uh, you know, removing of appendages and such. I mean, I I feel like it's it's intentional. It's created for um, tension, and I can just see this guy getting ready to like introduce himself, mm -hmm. right? And then you pan back and see the city and whatnot. I yeah. I dig it. Yeah. Yeah, I love these shots that that show just the character in older faces like this because you just it just looks like a map of the the things that they've been through, right? Right, right. Um, my only suggestion for this image, Armando, would be the dodging and burning. Uh, you can see around your subject's left ear and by his neck where uh, it's either too bright or it didn't get it didn't get burned in as close enough appropriately enough mm -hmm. so just watch for those halos because the halos are usually giveaway telltale signs that it's been it's been dodged heavily yeah. Yeah. and it's and it's distracting from his face anyway so yeah all right yeah well done well done well done all right move on from that uh steven sharf is back we haven't heard from steven in a while he is back and he says, this is Yosemite Valley View. Uh, Bridal Veil Falls at Yosemite National Park from the Yosemite Valley Road. Shot this with his Fuji film. Does Steven shoot Fuji? He doesn't shoot Fuji. Does I don't know. <laughs> we I, we should just assume that it's always Fuji, right? Like, <laughs> uh, We're teasing you, Steven, because you, you love Fuji so much. Uh, Fuji film X-T2 and a 10 to 24 at F4. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, just, that is just an unfair advantage. That is, that is beautiful. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's really great. I mean, this is, this is how I see, this is how I see nature is in black and white because, you know, studying Ansel Adams for so long and it just, I just love, I just love how black and white makes, you know, the rocks in the sky and, and the grass and everything, everything work. This is just fantastic. So this is a really cool view. This is a good location too. This is fun to I'm shoot. I'm trying right to think here. of where this is. I don't, with a body of water in front, is this the place i've been to yosemite several times is there like a bridge over there somewhere there's a road to the left yeah um there's a very famous shot that was taken by galen rowell right here that ended up on a stamp for california um of its color and there's uh the sunsets comes across to el capitan on the left um i've got a couple of shots from this location this is really cool this is a really cool spot um only only thing that I would say, Stephen, I love the presentation. Thank you for doing that. That really makes this image stand out yep. is you have a little tiny contrail over on the left right above right above, I think, El Capitan. That is El Capitan. Um, yeah, but that's that's it. I mean, everything else is handled superbly well. Our highlights are shadows. We have detail in the trees, the reflection in the water. Mm -hmm. The rule of thirds composition is fantastic. You get that horizon on the lower third. I mean, it, this is this is you know the epitome of what I consider to be like a perfect landscape of especially of Yosemite. This is great. Yeah, I easily see this hanging in a gallery somewhere. So. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Printed gigantic, of course. You know, so you can, oh, of course, you can see a course. climber on Yosemite there, hanging on. Only thing that would have made this shot better is had it been an infrared. Well, uh, maybe. No, not maybe. You don't have an infrared. How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That yeah, is true. true. Uh, well, what what, what would the what what would infrared have done? What if you like put on your infrared hat and look at this image? What would have changed? Uh, the trees would have gotten brighter because uh, the, the the needles on the pine trees will glow and then the sky would have gone darker. So you would have had a much more dramatic sky. Trees, reflection in the water would have gone down, but the highlights would have come up. Um, not really something you can you can fake and post. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. And the rocks would look different because the reflections coming off the rocks are totally different. So the texture uh, and granular, what am I trying to say? That We'll just go with texture. <laughs> the texture <laughs> of the rocks would really be significantly increased. Cool. I just noticed yeah. the waterfall in there too. Look at that. Very nice. Bridal Vale Falls. Yeah. I propose right underneath that. Wow. You ever hike up there? Uh, not to the top, no. No, I mean to the, to the falls. Like. Oh, yeah. 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 Nice, nice. Yeah, they get a in the summertime. It's worth going because it's soaking wet at the bottom. Well, so it used to be. I don't know how it is now because we went a while back and that that the falls did not look like that. It was like a drizzle, you know, from because we were in the middle of a drought, right? So oh it was, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. A drizzle. Hopefully, it's back to full force now. It's raining here today. Thank you, but uh, yeah, good shot though, Stephen, and welcome back. Yeah, definitely. All right, I think we have a couple more from Stephen in here too. Uh, here's another one from Steven. <clears throat> he says, uh, three amigos, Marco Malandri and Alex Barros and Danny Pedrosa crest the hill at the most dangerous corner at Laguna Seca. Turn six during Saturday morning qualifying for the 2007 U.S. MotoGP. This photo shows bike dynamics and rider's body language when riding at full race pace. Look at those terms. You bikers. <laughs> you bikers have your own language. <laughs> no, it's a great it's a great capture. I mean, mm -hmm. it, you know, you got to think, though, to a layman and uh, like Frederick, yes. you know, somebody who doesn't own a <laughs> motorcycle. I owned a motorcycle. I'm not a complete noob. I mean, I've, own, I've own owned a motorcycle. Now. I do not own one right now. I have a Segway. Does that count? It's got two wheels. No, no. <laughs> No, you can't do wheelies. If you can't do wheelies, it doesn't count. You can't do wheelies. Yeah. No. I uh, I just I wish we could see speed. You know, it's hard. Like like if you know where this is, you know what they're doing. Um, but it's hard to see the speed. That's really. I mean, that's not even a nitpick or a critique. It's, it's just, just you know, in an image. Yeah. Like this, where they're going flat out. I mean, it's 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 unfortunate not to see. Not to see the insanity in the speed. Yeah. Well, how would you show it? I mean, blur, motion blur. That's the only thing I can think of you could show, right? You can pan. Yeah. Yeah. Panning and motion blur. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love these. I am so like 
I, I hate it when I get like this because I am on this. I want a bike kick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can you can almost chart where my brain is thinking if you look at my YouTube history. I swear, man. <laughs> I've been looking at these videos. I've been looking at these videos that show like bikers, you know, riding around and trying to escape police after doing wheelies and stuff <laughs> oh my gosh so bad and so all right bad. yeah that's a that's a rabbit hole we don't want to go down oh right? my god it is yeah. a total rabbit hole you know and this whole thing that i didn't even know about which you probably know about since you're yep. a biker but this whole thing about like if you in here in california it's legal to lane split like ride between cars and traffic and if yeah. you squeeze too tight some bikers get get upset and will bang and hit your member your your your, your uh, mirror and knock it off and they're like there's whole videos that show people just getting pissed off and knocking mirrors off of cars <laughs> so bad it's entertaining yeah. though it is entertaining all right next shot is from candy shivley what's up candy candy says uh let me move these pallets around there's too many pallets on my screen um, she says, hi, guys. Uh, I didn't want to miss out another pr uh, pro or photo critique this week, so I decided to post a composite that I've been playing with today. It uses a background layer with four images of the same tree using different blend modes and opacity. Cool. Yeah, this is really neat. I, at like first, Marvel in the thumbnail, levels. it looked like snow. It looked like maybe there was like snow in the background mm -hmm. and then and then um, the tree. So I love this. Creates lots of depth. Very 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 cool yeah. very cool yeah i love these composites too you know these are these are really nice when i first when i when you like you said when you first look at the thumbnail for this shot i thought marble i thought oh these are trees oh, you know, are branches yeah. above a slab of marble because it has sort of that marbling flavor to it in the background but yeah nice work very yeah nice i love work. the toning everything you she posted a darker one which i, I like the lighter one better mm -hmm. i think that one yeah, it has more it has more layers that make it feel almost real, right? Like it's almost in nature, but then you look at it a little bit more and you're like, oh wait, this was this was created. That's that's definitely awesome. Yeah, yeah. This could also this could almost be almost be either a, a horizontal triptych, you know, with three different shots, or a vertical triptych with this shot split into three pieces and framed individually. That'd be interesting to see. You know, as far as presentation on the wall somewhere in the house, <clears throat> and I'm just being selfish because I really need to put some stuff on the walls here. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Candy, for that. Moving right along. Mike Doran's in the house. Mike says, uh, this image was created in 1989. Wow. During the FUSA series at Willow Springs Raceway of longtime friend Rich Oliver aboard the team Robert's Yamaha YZR500 Grand Prix bike. This was shot with a Nikon F4. Remember those? With a oh, I do. <laughs> Nikon 300mm yeah. F4 lens on Fuji Velvia 50. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. yeah look at I that. wore out a couple of those bodies. The F4? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was, that my, was my last, last. That was my last film camera. Yeah, 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 that's exactly what I was gonna say. That was my last film camera. Yeah, yeah, that was a heavy body too. I mean, the Nikon bodies are still the the, the DSLRs, full frame DSLRs are still heavy, right? But it's yeah, that was a beast, especially with a big lens on it. You could kill somebody with that thing. <laughs> yeah. All right, what do you think about this shot? I love it. I love it. Another left turn. So mm -hmm. we know that all motorcycles make left turns. That's all they can do. They just make left turns. <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> that's that's right. It. I mean, like all these images, left turns. Yeah. Um, I'm giving you a hard time, Mike. Uh, but great timing. I like the knee just off the ground. Uh, you know, the framing, the speed, the panning of the background. Very well done. Yeah. This feels like we're moving. I love that. Yeah. This is what you were talking about, you know, regarding Steven's image. Yeah, the yeah. yeah we, we've speed. talked about this many times. Mike st submits a lot of these kinds of photos, these kind of race photos. And we talk a lot about the technique and the skill that goes into panning, you know, and blurring the background to show speed while still making sure your subject is as sharp as possible. But, when, you know, reading the description for this one, you, you know, it's easy. I, I would say it's relatively easy to do something like that when you can chimp and look at the back of your camera and say, oh, I messed that up. All right. When they come around again, I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to change it up when you're shooting digital. But he was shooting 
uh, Fuji Velvia 50. Right, ISO 50 right. out there. So when I see shots that were shot like this, that that takes skill and were shot on film, that is another level. That is, uh, you know, it's literally another level because you're literally working without a net. There you were, you were right. 30, you know, I mean, you got 36 exposures, but still, you know, you don't see what's <laughs> on those exposures until probably days later. So, right. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Good job. Yep. All right. I know my, Mike's over there nodding his head. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it takes a lot of skill. <laughs> a lot of skill to do that. All right. Next one is uh, Jeff and Deason. I think I got that right. Ad, Adnison. Adnison? In the, yeah, in the in the description, he helps oh, us out. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. yeah. Ah, thank you for the phonetic spelling. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, kind sir. Finally, someone. <laughs> <laughs> Someone who recognizes the struggle here. <laughs> uh, he says, this shot was taken from one of our one hero at a time benefits for disabled vets. For the past 10 years, a small group of us dis disabled vets started the OHAT benefit uh, for vets and their family that was injured in the war. Most have been amputees. And though, uh, wait. And throw them, oh, through, oh, and throw them a uh, one day party with six to nine bands to give them a 100% and give them 100% of the proceeds. Cool. Uh, this is a shot with a Nikon D800 at 80 millimeter, F28, ISO 200 at 1 one twenty fifth of a second. Very cool. See, again, again, with this using your, your superpowers for the good of others. That is so cool. Right, right, right. Yeah, I like all those textures. It's very I like I like that outfit she's wearing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the beads. It's been like a Mardi Gras theme going on. Um, I, I if if I can channel Troy Miller for one second, can I try to channel you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What would you say about this? Um, uh -huh. I think what Troy might say is that uh, you'd want to focus the viewer's attention more on the face of this of this subject and to do that you would crop in a little bit to show right. more of the face maybe up from the bottom because it's you still get the idea of what's going on down there without having to see all of it um but in, but you would get closer into this this person's face I'm yeah yep is that what, yep. is, is that where you're going yep. <clears throat> yep i mean i love the fact that we have a direction of light so we have this short light coming in on the singer's face and there's some expression and there's like this movement in the right hand like you can tell that that the singer's really into it but there's so much going on in this frame there's so much busyness that i think just a tighter crop would would really really tell a better story mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i agree yeah well done though i like that and good good for you for for putting on that event <clears throat> yeah i know that is fantastic thank you for doing that very cool. I love this. See, this is the power of Twit Pro. I love that. I get so excited because you have all these different genres of photography coming together. And, you know, some people are helping each other like Trey in the beginning. And, you know, right. it just right. goes on. And, you know, Jeff is doing this cool stuff. And, you know, it's just very, very cool. Photography is much deeper than just the click of a shutter. It can go pretty yep. much as deep as you want it to go. Here's another one from Jeff. Uh, and Jeff says... Here's a portrait of my F2 Savannah shadow as she posed herself with his Nikon D300 with a 50 millimeter at F5.1 ISO 640. Look at that. Yeah, that is beautiful. That is, that is so a beautiful cool. cat. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is. <clears throat> you got to love cats. Yep. How can you not love cats? I don't know, but I, I, I dig that. I want to I want to I want to play with shadow. I want to throw treats for shadow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the little nose. <laughs> yeah yeah this is great i i will say i'm i'm not a huge fan of the heavy vignette um i think that i think that that it, it's too heavily manipulated for me i, I would just you know want to see the whole frame what's back there mm -hmm. um but with that said you know the shot of the cat is is pretty spectacular that's well done like you want to see you don't want to see you just want to see a little bit of detail back there right versus yeah black. yeah yeah, I think the heavy radial vignette that is just a bit overdone. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Very nice, though. Very nice, beautiful picture of a cat. Now, you know, one of those, the new Nikon you have could shoot a photo of this cat in a dark room, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> just about. Yeah, just about. <laughs> yeah, that's technology. Very cool. Thank you, Jeff, for that. Thanks for sharing your, your putty. All right, Howard Yermish is up next, and Howard says been a while since i've been able to participate but looking forward to being back welcome back man here's yeah. a rock texture from a hike that i did at rainbow vista trail in valley of fire state park yeah i've been out there look at that yeah i love these textures this yeah. is this is really cool that's mother earth right there posing for him right right and the neat thing about these kind of shots is that that you can keep moving in and keep moving in and keep moving in and there's always a new texture, yeah, you know, like a fractal. always more, always more, always more. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. yeah, I love this. I love this. No. Uh, well, this is Valley of Fire. So obviously you want to keep the the rocks orange from the iron content. Uh, but would you consider making this black and white or is it better in color? I don't know. I mean, I might, I might play with it in black and white, but realistically, this is monochromatic. So it's one color mm -hmm. or, you know, and with multiple tones. So it really serves the purpose of removing distracting color and the warm tone is is conducive to this image. So I think it's I think it's actually very well done. I like it. I always make everything black and white just to look at it, because sometimes you see patterns that you wouldn't otherwise see with color. Absolutely. Especially uh, warm tones. Warm tones tend to oversaturate. Um, our visual cortex, if you will. And when you take that warm tone out, the exposure tends to feel like it comes down and it has a different look when it's not when it's not warm. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of when I was in the military and they were teaching us how to print color. And part of part of how they were teaching us to print color was to start with a black and white image of that shot and print it black and white and depending on what you're printing right so if you're if you're doing like fine art stuff and you're trying to be artistic then start with the black and white and then add your color in because that informs you know we, we would use a grease pencil to sort of highlight areas that you wanted to fix and all that and then you'd add color later right right so, right right yeah love it love it I miss those days, but I'm glad they're gone. Because <laughs> so, I love me some digital, man. Sorry. <laughs> I do not. I do not miss film. Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. No. Hey, you never had to roll your film canisters yourself. We did that. You know, just, I did. Yeah, you rolled roll film canisters? 70 millimeter canister. Oh, yeah. Good Shot grief. Awesome block. Yeah. Nice. Nice. All right, next one up is William Beam, and William says, let's try this again. I didn't realize I had posted my critique entry as a comment on someone else's post. Uh, That's what I get first trying uh, to think on a Saturday. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good for you. Look at that. That's oh, really cool. Yeah, that is so cool. Yeah, reflections are, are, you know, like nuts to a squirrel for photographers. It's like it's hard to, to walk past a reflection on anything. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, it's funny, though. You, it's funny you say that. That is 100 percent true. But I've seen but I've learned from people that don't have photographic superpowers like, you know, photographers. They don't many of them don't even see reflections. They yeah. just don't see. They walk right by. You're like, we'll walk by by right walk by a puddle and like, wow, look at that tree oh, reflected yeah. in there. I gotta yeah. get that. You know, and other people are like, what? What are you talking about? And they won't know until you actually take the photo and show them. And they're like, oh yep. yeah, okay, wow, you're awesome. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You must have a good camera. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's a that's a great camera. It knows how to take good pictures. Yeah. Very Shadows cool. and textures are the same thing. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I just I'm just I'm really I'm really digging this image. I, you know, this is this is a challenging image in that it it's leaning, you know, and it looks like the buildings on the left. Maybe it's just because of the, the the angle of the lens, but it has an odd tilt to it. It does. It's like it's convergence of from a wide angle lens. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which I mean, you know, maybe it's not so bad. Um and I could live with it for sure. I mean, you know, it's really quite spectacular in color and everything. Yeah. I would crop off the left side right up to the building. Oh, and really just, just have the Capitol building in there? Oh, oh yeah. no, no. no keep, keep the that Parthenon-looking building in there mm -hmm. and, uh, and just crop the left side out. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the tree and some of the street lights or whatever over there. I really don't think it adds anything. Really focus on on that. But I agree. But a great I cap. Like, I would like to see that crop, too. And I'd also like to see this uh, perspective corrected. 
That's easy to do in Photoshop, right? You just drag a line. With the new Photoshop, you just drag a line on one of the vertical angles and it'll do yep. the rest for you. Yeah, yeah. you have to set a couple control points. Maybe maybe like a puppet warp or something is going to be required so you don't want to distort the rest of the image because mm -hmm. the, the center seems to be mostly vertical. So it's going to be challenging because the right side is leaning in. And the, yeah. yeah, you got to play with it. Yeah, definitely play with it. Give it a try. Yeah, punish those pixels, man. Pictures yeah, were and don't born be afraid to be punished. To, yeah, and don't be afraid to crop off some of that reflection, you know, to kind of fill it with all reflection and then building in sky. What do you think about the front, the 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 ground in the front left lower corner? Yeah, that that I mean, I would. God, I wish there was a way to get rid of that, but you can't. Yeah. yeah. Right. I was thinking it'd be cool if you could extend the the sort of glossiness of the glass or whatever that surface is back to cover that. But I don't think you could do that successfully. Well, I don't, I mean, I can barely add skies. I don't think I could add a reflection of a sky. Yeah, we know about that. Know about that. <laughs> In fact, at WPPI, I think there's an entire track called how to add skies. <laughs> unlike Troy Miller. <laughs> right. You're probably right. <laughs> oh, you're going to sit in there and heckle. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Thank you for this shot. Um, excuse me, William. Very nice. All right, moving right along. James Glennie's in the house. James says, uh, from our first snowfall in mid-November last year, loved how the snow was sticking to the trees and the little pops of color from the few remaining leaves. Tried it in full black and white and like it, but almost monochrome with bits of color appeal to me a bit more. Sorry, Troy. <laughs> Canon 6D. No, no, no. It's <laughs> Canon 6D 7200 F2.8. At 200 millimeter, uh, one one hundredth of a second, F2.8, ISO 100. He says he's also trying new export settings from Lightroom, trying to see if I can find a good point where it's still sharp after Mighty Networks gets done chewing. Right. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Mighty Networks likes to chew all the flavor out of shots, you know? <laughs> yes, they do. Yes, they do. All right. Let's bring yeah. this up. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Right away, my first thought was, oh, this this has got to be we got to try black and white because the graphical element. And then um, just as you were reading that, I noticed those little those little leaves, mm -hmm. those little colors of yellow leaves. And like, OK, well, all right, that defeats <laughs> the black and white right away. Yeah. So but, you know, you got to go through that cycle because you never know. And it also helps you understand why you've chosen the treatment and the color palette that you have. Exactly. Right. By changing it and playing with it. Exactly. You know what would be cool? This is a complete non sequitur. In fact, this is so much of a non sequitur. I'm going to put the cameras back on you and I for a second. You know what would be cool if uh, we did, because, you know, you and I, before we started recording, we were like, okay, how can we tighten this up to make it, you know, more useful to the membership? Um, and as I mentioned to you, one of the sponsors that I'm bringing on to the show is Capture One. And I know mm -hmm. you are a Capture One fan, as are many of our members. What if we did a show or a critique session or even a series of critique sessions where part of the requirement would be to download the free trial? Because it's free. You can download the free trial of right. Capture One and do something in there like some color replacement or something like that. And that's the submission. That could be cool. That could be really yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. We could have we could have a contest and we could give away uh, like a set of my styles or something. There you go, perfect, done, committed. <laughs> <laughs> but it has to be edited fully, fully in Capture One. It has to be a hundred percent in Capture One edit. Yeah, yep, I agree, I agree. I'm on the fence on if we should allow people to reprocess old photos. Or, I mean, if you're already a Capture One person, then whatever, right? You're you're automatically good. But if you're right. not, should you should the requirement be that you have to capture something new, fresh, raw pixels to throw into Capture One? Or can you just harvest, like some people have been doing, you know, harvest your old image database and bring that into Capture One and edit? Yeah. You know, it shouldn't matter, Yeah, just right? harvest. Yeah, because yeah. you got to, if you, if you haven't used Capture One, you're going to go through the grinder anyway, mm -hmm, <laughs> whether mm -hmm. you went and shot something or not. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's just about the learning process. Oh, that's cool. I like that idea. Yeah. But the other side of the grinder is, uh, ooh, what was that? The other side of the grinder is very nice, though, right? Once you get, once you learn to capture one and, and understand how it thinks, it's kind of yep. cool, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. I love it. Well, cool. All right. So let's move on from this shot. Thank you, James. 
And uh, I'm lost. Okay, there I am. I I totally got lost. Capit- yeah, Kai Grotter is in here. El Capitan tight crop. Gosh, look at that. That looks like it's a shot on Vulcan or Klingon or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah totally I wanna, you know i gotta say i'm i got i got a bit of a man crush on kai's images he he he's always doing like these really minimalistic uh you know just very 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 quiet yet very powerful images mm-hmm. and i like that i like that a lot i feel like i feel like this is my image right like this is something that i would just obsess over to go photograph i love this yeah yeah i agree yeah i'm i'm glad you didn't say make it black and white because i think it would be strong in black and white but i don't I, have to say I, that i like the My... color i like the color <laughs> in this one <laughs> i don't have to say it needs to be black and white i don't need to say that those that understand they already they already are they're with me it's okay this, this shot is dramatic though it almost makes me when i look at it it almost makes me like think i want a soundtrack of like gregorian monks in the background you know <laughs> doing that low guttural chanting you know as you just sort of look at this thing oh. and the fog roll in yeah yeah <laughs> we can't do it We're i can't not. do it my voice is not that deep i can't do it very cool love it that's another one that can yeah. easily be in a gallery or on a wall or oh, anywhere yeah it's just this is this is so good lovely shot see all the talent we have in twit pro i'm still looking at kai's image by the way are you <laughs> <laughs> okay i'll go i'll move on all right next shot is from trey nelson uh trey says in the spirit of the release of the official specs for the panasonic lumix s have you heard of that troy no. uh no. i figured i'd take it back to where the mirrorless game started from this is his panasonic g1 with a panasonic leica El Merit 45 uh, 2.8 he shot this in san francisco along the embarcadero yeah, Panasonic released their new full frame mirrorless. Troy, what's going on, man? <laughs> <laughs> the full frame game is on. So, yeah, yeah, we did a whole show about that. Um, uh, what was it? Friday, Thursday, Friday, when the when the release happened, and I had five of us in a room, uh, five Lumix ambassadors in a room, just sort of talking through what the uh what the specs were what's exciting what what's missing you know the only thing of that not to digress too much but the only thing that one of the main things that are missing from that system for me is i have grown attached to a fully articulated lcd you know that can right. pop out and swing forward like the camera i'm shooting on right now is gh4 and I'm, i can see myself as we record this that one has that sony style one axis kind of thing that pops out so you can shoot from low angles and look up at it and you know i think it swivels to the left and right a little bit as well but nothing fully articulated but i'm digressing the seagull yeah, because <laughs> yeah because the big question is and don't answer why why do you need that on a full frame camera that you're supposed to be pointing into the thing so the seagull i can answer one. that <laughs> <laughs> because i want it and it's on oh. all my other cameras that's why oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me relearn. Just give me the stuff I'm accustomed to. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> uh, so why Craig, do you have talk about Why do you have French food. fries with your steak all the time? Because <laughs> I like them and they're delicious. Um, this is a cool shot. This is a cool shot. Sorry, Trey. We we're just digressing all over the place. Um, yes, it's a very it's a very cool shot, and I I like the uh, I like the you know going back and grabbing an older image or taking a shot with an older camera. I think that's very very cool. Yeah. Um, this is this this has this image has one of those things that I see a lot, and that is a vignette or a burning that's been done. You can obviously see it on the edges, and then when you get closer to your subject, you start to see the highlight uh, where it wasn't burned in. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I would just suggest that when you're when you're trying to burn in the backgrounds and things like that, you know, do it manually, you know, get in there and actually like, like hand burn like we used to in the darkroom and get rid of those halos. Yeah, I think you'll have a much, much stronger image when you do that. Very cool. Do you, uh, Troy, do you use a uh, Wacom tablet? I do. Touching? Yeah, I use I use a couple very specific tools, but uh, the, the Wacom tablet is absolutely a necessity for me. Is it Wacom or Wacom? Wacom, I don't know. Uh, I decide Wacom. This is potato, potato. Cool. When they become a sponsor for for Twip, they can tell us. They can tell us. There you go. All right. Thank you, Trey, for participating. It's good to have you on the network too, man. Thank you. Welcome. 
Moving right along. Next one is by Joel Figueroa. And he says, uh, no caption on this one. Let's bring this up. Yeah, it's very, I mean, I like the, I like the toning on this a lot. And it's a motorcycle moving from the left to the right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not, well, it's not moving. It's not moving. It's pointing, <laughs> yeah, see, it's pointing left. It's to moving. Right. They're going left. They're, they're making a left turn. <laughs> Uh -huh. See, you see how the universe is teasing me? The universe knows I'm thinking about getting a motorcycle. It keeps throwing these motorcycle shots in my face. Right, right. Uh, th this is a great use of depth of field. You know, I, I, I really love that. I wish that the, the Triumph um, uh, logo was all in focus. I wish the depth of field encompassed the entire, you know, branding on the side of the tank, the entire, mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's more, it's more back focused than it is, but I mean, it's still neat. I love the fact that the, the fuel tank cap is in focus. I like that. I'm not sure why there's, looks like there's a lot of dust, but dust specs, either it was shot on film or there's just a lot of, that doesn't look like dust in a camera sensor, mm -hmm. but in, in either case, easily removed. Right. 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 Yeah. yeah. A couple of clicks. Yeah, very nice abstract. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Again, again, this looks like it would be right at home in a series on the same motorcycle. You know, little detail, detail shots. One maybe of the gas cap, another one of the speedometer, and, you know, then maybe a full shot showing the whole thing in context. All right, Joel, thank you, man. And we're down to Thomas Aaron. And Thomas says, the first shot for my personal project, Chaos and Structure. I'm intrigued by the way mankind interacts with nature. We constantly try to hew structure into it because it is within structure, definitiveness, that we feel safe. In this picture, a suburb... Uh, a suburb is planted in the desert close to Sandia Mountain Range outside of Albuquerque. Look at that. That was almost poetic there. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I would I would venture to say that that was poetic. That was. <clears throat> Look at that broccoli in the foreground. I know. I know. I, I mean, I, I really like that. I think it, it would be better if it was burned down evenly in that lower left corner. That way we have a, a dark shadow in the front left corner. Then we have the highlight of the the house line, the horizon line, and then we have, you know, sort of the dark of the mountains and then the light of the clouds and then the dark of the blue sky. So we get all these color layers in there yeah, uh, or tone, tonal layers rather. Um, now I love the use of the composition, the juxtaposition between the color flower and the mountain. Mm -hmm. You know, they're both like mountainous, you know, shapes. Yeah. The sweeping clouds. Very, very awesome. Very well done. And we know that's not cauliflower, by the way. Just, you know. Yeah, it's not cauliflower. We know. We know. It's, it's probably broccoli or something. <laughs> <laughs> or, or cauliflower. Broccoli. Um, no, what I was going to say about this image is the, you know, you and I talk a lot about subject and what, what is the story or the subject of the image um, when you look at it on its own without a story added to it. So when I look at this image, you know, I hear like now that I have his words in my head, I know what he was thinking. But if I look at this image without having those words in my head, I'm trying to like, what is what is my subject? Is it that foreground image? Is it the suburban sliver in the middle or is it the is it the mountains in the background or the sky? So. Right. Yeah. And this would be good in a series around, you know, chaos and structure. But mm -hmm. on a standalone, I mean, my first thing was this is just a really great, you know, landscape shot um, with a little bit of with a little bit of structure in nature, yeah. you know, because yeah. I like the clouds and I like the mountains and things like that. But knowing that he did it as a project to <laughs> to highlight those things makes it even more powerful. Mm -hmm. Chaos and structure. I love that. Sounds like a lot of my relationships. right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's close off of that one and move on. <laughs> all right thank you thomas for that here's another one from thomas aaron thomas says another shot in my personal project chaos and structure to me a defining feature of humanity is that we relentlessly try to tame chaos by carving structure into it the simple barbed wire fence running through a wild New Mexico landscape was yet another attempt to do just that. But chaos seems to be trying to take back what is hers, which may be a defining feature of chaos. Yep. Entropy. That's right. Yeah. 
This is great. Yep. Yeah. He's right. Yeah. Everything's going to return to chaos eventually, right? Yeah. Yeah. Really temporary. It was like, you know, we we're like drawing, drawing little, little line sketches on a on in the sand on the beach when the tide's coming in <laughs> that's basically right that's humanity yeah. right there <laughs> yeah. eventually the water's coming in it won't even care what you wrote so right 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 or be or remember or remember yeah or remember yeah. anything this is great thomas i i mean i really like what you've done i like the composition i like the twisted barbed wire on the right i think that's that sort of breaks up that continuous line and sort of adds to you know, the, the chaos and the mess, the mess of it all. Um, I would suggest that when you're shooting things like this and you look at your subject, try to look at the horizon line behind you where you've got this horizon line going right through the bird's head. And it probably wouldn't have been too hard just to hold the camera up over your head and shoot down a little bit mm -hmm. to isolate the crow uh, more against the solid color. I think that would have helped a little bit. Uh, you're saying you still keep some sky in there, just just change your angle of attack so it's pointing down so you have more mountains yep. behind the crow. Yeah, you're basically just moving the bird down mm -hmm. in, the, in the scene a little bit just so that that horizon line between the mountain and the sky doesn't cut right through the head of yep. the bird. Yep. It's a subtle thing, but it, if you were to compare them side by side, one with, one without, you might you might choose the other. So it's just something you decide at that moment. Very cool. All right, moving right along. Thank you, Thomas, for that. All right, next shot up is from Michael Rhino. So yeah. Michael Rhino, Michael says, Hanging Lake, Hanging Lake near Glenwood Springs, Colorado, is well known for beautiful images taken during the spring, summer, and fall. I chose to make a winter hike and captured this image of a section of the falls, having been there in the spring when the falls are running at peak flows. I have to say that I really enjoyed the scene that winter provided. I'm thinking about considering this as somewhat of an abstract rather than a landscape. He shot this with his Nikon D850 with a 24 to 120 lens at 120. The shutter was 1 15th of a second F8 at ISO 64. Slow, slow, slow. Very cool. All right, let's bring this up. Yeah. Bring it up, Mighty. Come on, Mighty. <laughs> Let me try again. Every now and then, Mighty likes to be cantankerous. There we go. All right. Yeah, okay. that's very cool. It looked like uh, <clears throat> it looked like stalactites I was in a cave say that. first. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. But you know, this is this is a scene that I that I wish I could see more of that reflection. You know, and and like a long exposure is what I what I would want to shoot there. But speaking to the image that we have here, um, you're right. It it feels very 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 abstract. I would even maybe crop up from the bottom a little bit, remove some of that water, so we can only see, you know, the stalactites of the frozen water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I was thinking two things about this. I was thinking. Um how dangerous it would be to be swimming underneath those. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, then, and then also, uh, you know, just sort of sort of looking at the shot, would this be, and this was my side, you know, saying would this be better in black and white? Would it be better if he had shot, if, if he did a version of this in black and white? In other words, does, does the color, do the colors add to this? Or do they even take away from this? What do you think? Well, I think that because you have highlights against the shadows, I think black and white would work really well in this. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to tell whether it's in the image or whether it's mighty compressing it, but we do have some areas where you've got blown highlights. So, you know, maybe this is an image that you bring down, bring the, the whole tonality down, mm -hmm. convert it to black and white, you know, throw in some some good like a dehaze or a clarity or, you know, some good sharp focusing and things and really bring out the texture in, in the ice. Yeah. Yeah, let, yeah the, let also, the background rocks go away. Yeah, I was also thinking um, I would love to see something for scale. I know it's probably not possible in here, um, but something that, that lets me know how big or small these uh, these stalactites are. Um, and then do you, do you notice, did you see the ghost in there in the shot? The ghost? Oh, on the lower right-hand corner? Yeah, isn't that yeah. cool? There's a ghost in there. Yeah. How funny. Yeah. Very cool. That's how my brain works, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, we know. We know. <laughs> this crazy stuff going on in here. All right. Thank you, Michael Rhino. You rock, man. 
good to have you in the community as well. All right, next one is from uh, Mike Dorans up again. Let's see. He says, my submission for TBT from my archives, C, uh, or circa 2007, of a longtime friend, Elena Court. Enjoy. Let's bring that up. Look at that. Yeah, that's a, like an enduro, <clears throat> probably a mixed race, you know, where you're on dirt and pavement. Yeah, got those Alpine stars out there. That's great. That's old school. Mm-hmm. There you yep. go. All right. Mike Doran, thank you for that one. And he's got another one in here right after that one, too. And uh, Mike says, I was going through my archives looking for an image and came across this image of my nephew, uh, Garrity Doran, showing off in front of my lens. I was using a Canon 1D Mark III. Um, with a 24 to 105 f4 canon lens enjoy let's take a look yeah i definitely want to go ride now is that, is that that's the kind of bike you have right it's similar no i have a yamaha i mean but it's an enduro or dirt bike right that's just yeah it's a dirt bike yeah it's full-blown dirt bike yeah not street, that's fun which stuff. means not street legal at all no no not street legal at all okay yeah but a lot of fun to ride. Yeah, mud puddles and things like that. Those are always fun. Wheelies especially. You ever laid it down? Yeah. No crashes? Yes. Yes. Oh, oh really? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> As part of the game? Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, you're not riding hard enough unless you're crashing on occasion. That's right. Yeah. Very cool. Any thoughts on the shot? Um, you know, I just wish that it wasn't so much in shadow, but I mean, I realized that that was the moment that, that you had, you know, that was your, that was your, uh, uh, Decisive. photojournalistic moment. So, you know, post-processing, maybe bring the shadows up a little bit so we could see, but no, I mean, good, good, uh, capture timing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Peak, the, peak moment. Yeah. The this Cartier Brisson, the decisive moment. All right. Hey, we only have like 50 more to go through. We're good. We're right. Good. <laughs> All right. This is Mark Duday. Dudet. And Mark says, uh, we hiked at 6 a.m. to catch to catch the sunrise, but the only thing we got was fog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love these kind of shots. I got a shot similar to this up in uh, Yellowstone. It was very foggy right. with some trees in the foreground. Love these kind of shots where they just you, yeah, it's it's just white out and you have no idea, no sense of direction, scale, anything. Yeah, those are those are kind of scary moments, but they also, you know, if you're there, you get an opportunity to capture an image like this, which is which is fantastic. I mean, I, I love the abstract nature of this. I love the tones. Um, I would probably bring the shadows down a little bit more to create some more darkness in the trees, but that's that I would, I would try it. I don't know. I don't know that it needs it. There's, mm -hmm. I love the fact that the highlights that are in here, the fog and the, and the snow is not blown out. It's not pushed to paper white or pure white. You know, there is some, some tone in there. And I think detail. that's, yeah. And this is an image that would do really well to be, uh, presented, you know, like with, a with a key line and then like a little slightly darker frame and mm. cause it'll really make the image itself stand off of the page, if you will. Good idea. Yeah. Mark, yeah. you should give that a try. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah. It's really nice. Very well done. Love the composition. Good job for hiking out there. I will never get a 6am shot. <laughs> never say never, man. Never say never. <laughs> You're a night owl, man. I've seen, the, the, I think the latest post I've seen from you in Twip Pro uh, <laughs> was 3am or something like that. So you are, you're definitely not getting up at 6am if you're going to bed at 3am. <laughs> no, no, not, not much. All right. So next one is from Steve Van Sickle. Yeah, this is neat. I remember when he I looked at this right after he posted it. I love the the how the light draws you into sort of the town square or whatever that area is there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then you have some darkness and then you can see in the distance some more city and some, you know, some light pollution if you will going up into the fog layer or the cloud layer. Mhm. Mm yeah. Yeah, this is perfect as a panoramic too. This is really nice. Yeah, it almost looks like a diorama. Right. It looks like. Oh, yeah. Right. Or or it could be shot with a tilt shift and it's miniature or something like or, you know, a toy train set or something. Right. Right. Exactly. 
Yeah, that's cool. Let me this description he put in here. He says the polar vortex uh, wasn't as brutal in D.C. as it's been in the Midwest. But I saw all this from my balcony and had to take a panorama before the snow melted off the branches, which only took which only took an hour or so. He shot it with his Fuji X-T3 um, ISO 160 35 millimeter f2 at f8. Um, I think this was seven or so images stitched together and an average exposure of roughly 14 seconds. Oh, that's the view you got from your balcony? Man, nice. Yeah, yeah. And kudos for going out and doing it. You know, so often it's easy to look at something and then not take the time to, to set up the shot and then process the image. And, you know, you, you got you to put that effort in. You got to get out there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Images are not going to take themselves. All right, Steve, thank you. All right, moving right along. <clears throat> All right, next one up is from uh, Freddy Sedano. What's up, Freddy? Freddy says, singing in the cave with his Canon 60 F, uh, Canon 6D. This is shot at F5.6, and it's five seconds long. He shot this in Bermuda seconds before they jumped in. Let's see. What is this, a cenote? Look at that. That's crazy. Yeah. They were swimming in there. See, I I feel like there's like there's sea creatures living in there. Man. Like, <laughs> the creature that's where the creature from the Black Lagoon lives. Seriously, he's in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. yeah. That is that is very cool. No, that is really neat. I I love the you know how the leading lines you know take you out of the cave mm -hmm. and then you want to come back in. You want to look at the water and you look deep and then you you look back out the cave again. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. No. Great composition. Yeah, so what did me, you do? He brought me into the cave and then I walked out. Visually, I walked out of the cave on those steps on the right side. And then I came back around mm -hmm. and jumped in that blue water again. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's the way yeah. it made me feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking Very of nice. stalactites, look at that. There's stalactites in there. Right. There's a couple stalagmites on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Very nice. You know how you can tell the difference between a stalactite and a stalagmite? Um, besides the obvious, or well, so you don't I mean, mix I them up. I can't remember which one is it. The way uh, the way that I remember it is stalactites have to hold on tight, or they'll fall. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> we went to Miramac Caverns in Missouri, and the, and the guide told us. She says, "Just remember that a stalagmite that if you sat on it, it might hurt your bottom. So it's a stalagmite." <laughs> <-mite. laughs> I All like right. I like hold on tight to the ceiling. I don't, better, you know. No. <laughs> Oh man, love it, Freddie! Thank you, man. I was I was waiting to, when I looked at this. I was waiting to see like Groot or somebody in here. Oh jeez, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Very cool. Thanks, Freddie. All right, next one up is Michael Dare. Michael says uh, the incarceration of Bobo. I was fascinated by how emotional this seemed at this moment yeah it totally does doesn't it look at that yeah i, I can't go to the zoo i mean yeah. i understand there's animals that that are either injured or whatever and that they that, that that's best for them to be there but <clears throat> to me it's just it just makes me sad to see them locked up yeah yeah you know it's like the big cats they, they only pace in captivity they don't pace in the wild so it just it's not it's not natural for them to be there. <clears throat> so yeah. not knowing the story of Bobo, um, assuming that, you know, he'd probably prefer to be somewhere else, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, conversely, is he safer here, you know, for whatever reasons of what's going on where he'd normally be? Right. Right. This is true. Mm -hmm. This is true. But either way, uh, it's a very powerful image, Michael. And I think you did a fantastic job of keeping, you know, Bobo's face in an open part of the grill so we can see his eyes without having a line going through it or something composition is really well done uh treatment is fantastic it's 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 nice it's very very nicely done mm -hmm. yeah and nicely titled too the incarceration mm -hmm. of Bobo. very cool this is exactly what's going on here very cool all right michael thank you sir <clears throat> Next shot is another one from Michael. Let's see. Michael says, my one in a million shot, the split, split second before Lucius Fox. Yep. Same as the guy on Batman <laughs> gets hit by the, oh, so Lucius Fox. Um, 
uh, gets hit by the ball. This was a pure luck shot. Let's take a look. Oh, man. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to leave a mark. Yeah, that's going to leave a knot right there. <laughs> yeah. I love I love how, like, the other guys have no idea, right? Like, they're just expecting, like, the normal, you know, swing and hit and run and hope everything's good. And then right, right after this moment, I wonder what the next frames look like. Mm -hmm. Chaos. You know? Chaos. Yeah. Yeah. This, is a, this, this needs to be in a series so we can see their expressions when this guy's like knocked off his heels yeah yeah i would in fact if you were shooting on continuous i would love to see the before and after shots if you you know if he had this he was rolling the entire time that'd be really interesting to get the just before it hit when it hit and then the aftermath shot Right, right. I do want to give Michael credit for uh, just really fantastic framing in this. Um, you've got vertical lines really well done on the left edge, your horizontal line across the top edge, very intentional use of those lines, really, really uh, adds to nice framing to the image. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good job. Yep. Stone crabs. All right, we're in the home stretch now, sir. Joshua Sommerfeld is up next. And Joshua says, legendary, uh, legendary bass vocalist Ray Dean Reese of the Kingsman Quartet. The Kingsman have been around for 56 years, and he's been singing bass with them for 54 of that. He shot uh -huh. this with his Canon EL 77D with a 70 to 300 millimeter F4 to 5.6 lens at 750. Um, at F4, uh, one two hundredth of a second at ISO 200. Let's take a look. Wow. 54 yeah. years. That's pretty awesome. Uh -huh. Be doing what you like to do for 54 years. Yeah. yeah. That's the definition of success and happiness right there. Yeah. Yeah. Great shot. Great composition. Great treatment. I think black and white probably plays a lot into this. I like it a lot. I like where it's cropped just below his jacket, so you get that full body in there, or that you know that full upper torso. I was I was on the fence of were you going to say crop up a little bit to get more of his face in there? Um, well, you know, I mean, you could you could crop just below his right hand, I think. Um, but he's on stage, hmm. so it's really the story that you want to tell. Um, the only the only critique that I would have of this and, and having shot some live performances is timing. You know, when when and where do you get that microphone so that it looks like they're singing, but it doesn't look like they're taking a bite out of it. It doesn't obscure their face. I think this is I think this is well done. It's a good, good timed moment. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yep, Josh did a good job. Now, this other guy coming up, I'm not so sure. Uh-oh, I think I know who this is. Troublemaker? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Peter Levshin, our <laughs> troublemaker. Peter said, I'm just kidding, Peter. We love you. Um, he shot this with his A7R. Um, oh, Mark II. Infrared. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, so it was infrared, 100 millimeter. He shot this in Papua New Guinea. It was F2.8, black and white, so that Mr. Miller stops bitching at me. Problem is that he's right most of the time. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> he definitely knows Troy Miller. <laughs> well, he shot it infrared. There's not a whole lot. There are different directions it could go. Although Peter, we although, call that constructive he, bitching. That's what he's doing. <laughs> right. Although Peter, you know, I don't think you've shown anybody your uh, your your Martian phase. Any of your images from the, your Martian phase. You need to post some of those. Um. I'm not even going to tell you what they look like. All right. uh, I'm sure we'll see them in the next week or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're very crazy cool. Oh, so. I dig the shot. I dig this. This is like just, I, you know, I, I just try to think of the story behind. And I know most of the story because I interviewed Peter. If you want to see, if you want to hear about Peter's trip to Papua New Guinea, just go to thisweekinphoto.com and search for Peter Levshin. And you'll see the interview that I did with him. Um, but uh, the story behind how he got this tribesman or is this a tribesman or a chief this is the chief this is the chief uh got him up there to get the shot in full regalia you know is is pretty interesting yeah yeah he was out taking him on a tour or something and he, and he walked up there so mm -hmm. i know that a lot of these like peter has no influence over how things happen so yeah which is how very you, cool how come you didn't go on this trip troy miller he could because it's gone. in papua new guinea yeah so it's on another part of this little little marble no. that you're on. 
Yeah, 17 flights and no. Yeah, you'd have been done by now. See? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, nope, no, thank you. You could have brought your Xbox with you. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Not that you could have plugged it in, but you could have had it with you. <laughs> Couldn't have brought my running water and my <laughs> no. Yeah, no none of that none of that stuff no no this is you know this is a, a really great image and one of the things that infrared does in this is it really accentuates those clouds mm -hmm. so yeah I really I really dig that I like the <clears throat> I like the pose I like the choice of this series that that he picked that's sort of that little hey come on let's go <laughs> yeah. what are you doing <laughs> yeah I like this one and the fact that it's infrared I I like that I don't know that it's infrared. Because some shots, oh, as you true. know, yeah. you can you can look at them and know, oh, look at those that foliage is bright. Yeah, that's infrared. Um, but this one, it looks like he's using infrared as a tool to to get a better shot versus to show the environment in a different way. Right, right, right. Yeah, infrared works really good on this one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good composition. I like him. I like him in the center, and I like the horizon on the lower third. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of positive elements in this image, that have great storytelling abilities and stuff. So, yep, yep, yep. Here. Peter O'Prince is probably big because he's very and he wants one of those. He wants one of those little sheaths. <laughs> Did you say one of those little sheaths? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> cool way to stick that in there i love it <laughs> yeah i've been waiting to use that uh, all right here's another one from peter and peter says sony a7r mark ii infrared 10 millimeter and zion with one with one of the best instructors in the united states only for one day learned a lot very helpful english is his second language <laughs> but we communicated <laughs> with a lot of sign language <laughs> nice what the hell are you talking oh God, about? How do you communicate? What? Okay. Exposure. Up, about, up. I was there. I was me. What are oh, you doing? Is he talking about you? The dork. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't... Uh, yeah, I know. I remember right where this is. Um, you know, I don't know what Peter's thinking with that vignette. I we I have a hard time with that. That's... Uh, mm -hmm. I wonder strong. if that happened... In camera, because he shot it with the Voigtlander, the 10 millimeter Voigt, and then sometimes in infrared, they tend to it tends to clip on the extreme edges. Mm. Um, he did something to this image. At the, it's, it's yeah, it's almost a spotlight at the top. Yeah, yeah, and at the bottom. I like the, yeah. I like the shot. I like the roots. I like all that gnarliness, and then the open sky with the sun behind that pinnacle back there. Mm -hmm. um, I just feel like the the vignette and the blacks are pushed way too far. Yeah. Come on, Peter, you know better. Yeah, yeah. We need a penalty box on. Re-edit this one in your in your Mars phase in your Mars colors. There you go, Peter. Pay no attention to the to this guy. <laughs> he he knows not of what he says. That's yeah, usually true. <laughs> All right, and I think we have one more. Last but not least, yep. Freddie Sedano. Let's bring Freddie up. Freddie says, uh, "The Last Sentinel." This is Canon 6D with a 90 millimeter TSE. Not sure what TSE means. Um, ISO 100 F9, uh, one one hundredth of a second. Got this right on the third try. There's a speed light on a snoot coming in from camera right, white reflector to the left, and a speed light in the back with a red gel. From the storyboard to final render, was this was pretty successful, if I do say so myself. Let's bring it up. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's good use of lighting and, you know, that portrait light and depth of field. And it's I mean, you could this could be this could be a full blown human standing somewhere doing this and, and the light would the light would feel the same. So very successful, Freddie. I, I really dig this. This is one of my favorite. Uh, what would you call like fantasy miniatures mm -hmm. that you've done? Yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite. I like the con the color contrast where he's got the the brown of the the Groot character against mm -hmm. the, sort of the red of the the background, and you know basically those colors generally mean lifelessness, you know, or burnt or something. And then in the foreground, right. one little spring of grass or plant that's coming up there. Just, just to balance it all. So good work. I agree. Yeah, yeah. This is really great. Now I, I spent yesterday with Freddie. Um, was it yesterday? Saturday with Freddie out at the Salton Sea for our Wasteland model shoot, oh, and cool. he shot a lot of video and some cool stuff. He did like these fight scenes and stuff. So video. So Freddie. So when you get some of that done, you got to share a snippet 
with us because that's that's some very cool stuff. Freddie is extremely creative and an amazing videographer as well as a really good photographer. So awesome and a member of Twip Pro. Look at that. And and well, that's what makes him awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's no. a, it's one of the sprinkles on the cake. You know, we'll take that. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Is that? I think that's it. I think we are at the end. Make sure I didn't miss anyone. Yeah. Uh, we got you. Yep. We did Tim's last week, right? We did do this one last week, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah, with the light coming across your face. Right, Absolutely. right, right, right. Very cool. So let me switch it back over to our mugs. And there we go. All right. That's it. <laughs> Well, that wasn't that wasn't that many. We could have gone through another twenty or thirty. Come on, man. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. No, that was cool. That was good. I'm excited that there's so much activity in there. Yeah, wait till you go through one of the IEP, the image competitions where we have 120. Oof, yeah. Well, you guys have to. You got to do a little more speed roundy, speed roundish kind of stuff on those, right? You can't. Yeah, yeah. That takes us like three hours to do those. Yeah, yeah. Because we tend to marinate when we do these critiques a lot and just sort of sit. And, yeah. And drink in the image as we discuss it versus good, right. bad, ugly. Right. You know, throw it out. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool, man. All right. Well, let's uh, let's end this one. Let's go ahead and close this one off. What's uh, what's going on with you this week? Oh, gosh, this week is very similar than to, to what my last few weeks have been. It's just prepping for the new year, getting, you know, gear ready, working a lot on my website and spicy jello stuff and helping you with the image critiques and all these ideas that we have. So it's it's a lot of it's just a lot of planning and prepping for the year. Very cool. Yeah. Same yeah. here. It's kind of exactly what I'm doing, planning and prepping for the year and and lining up sponsors and all kinds of fun stuff. I'm really excited because we're going to be kicking off um, and we've been threatening to do this forever. But the the office hours, um, yeah, office hours for the Twip Pro community that's coming imminently, as well as our webinar series that we're going to be doing and some of the first topics that we're going to cover in the webinar series that I want to hit are capture one for sure. You and I talked about. So yep. I, want to, I want to hit capture one. Um, I also want to do one on color that talks about sort of demystification of color accuracy. And does it matter, right, these days? Or is are you is, are you chasing the last P on a plate with a spoon? You know, <laughs> you're never going to get it. <laughs> or can you nail color these days? I think I under, I know the answer. Um, but I want to I want to go through the process and sort of demonstrate that with folks and a couple other things. And you're going to you're going to be a WPPI in two weeks, right? Yeah. Two weeks, yeah, something like wait. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be hanging out there acting a fool in Las Vegas. So if you are in Las Vegas, you Twit Pro members or otherwise uh, don't have to be a Twit Pro member. Just make sure you hit one of us up on um, on social media and, you know, we'll try to organize some sort of get together one of the nights there where. Come hang out with us, have a beer or two or something like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, man. I think that's it for this episode. This is uh, Twit Pro Photo Critique number 52. And I think we're done, man. Take care. Yes. In the bag. In the bag. See you later, man. This is Twit.